does give you certain emotions, but those emotions won't last forever. However, if you give up, then that situation will last forever. The guest I have with me here today is the one who said this. I couldn't agree more and I was very intrigued to find out about his thoughts on failure, his thoughts on struggles and how he deals with all the emotions and the trials and tribulations of his life. Hello everyone, I'm Mansi Agarwal. Welcome to If I Had Not Failed, the show where we try to showcase the backstory, the struggles of all the most successful people that you can think of. We're trying to do this so that we can normalize failure and give hope to people who are struggling and who are having difficult times in their life. The guest I have here today is a very, very, very talented man. Not only is he a superstar, not only is he an amazing singer, I am particularly impressed by his oratorial skills and his deep thoughts. He is a charmer, he is kind, he is none other than Mr. Rajesh Hamal. Namaste, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much for actually agreeing to come. And uh, I just like to tell you that we all respect you and love you oh, for who you are. Thank you so much. And we all know that you're the right. superstar. You're the guy who can do everything, <laughs> climb over walls, as we were discussing right now. Only if I'm in mood. <laughs> Only if you're in the mood. I understand that. My first question to you is this. What do you, Mr. Hamal, consider your biggest failure? Oh, my God. Uh, you know, uh, the very so-called success that I have got at this point in life is actually uh, laid on the foundation of failure, enormous failure. My very first step, when I took my very first step towards my career, was the step where I tripped and fell. And uh, so when I look back to that, it's even amazing that I uh, succeeded eventually and reached thus far because uh, uh, my very first step was enormous failure, you know, the people who were supporting me or my families were constantly discouraging me of what I was doing. Uh, there was no support system to speak of as such because my parents were sort of like, uh, you know, really didn't want me to get into the films because they saw no future in films, at least in this country. So no support system. Then I took my first step and I fell. And everybody around me, the immediate family members and the friends who knew me said, okay, we knew this was going to happen and now probably this will make you change your mind and opt for some other professions or something else. But now when I look back, you know, in retrospect, uh, what kept me going was, there was this, I don't know where did I get it from, but there was this some kind of enormous self-confidence that, uh, even after failing, I had this notion in me is that I failed not because I'm not up to the mark, but just because uh, it was not the right time, maybe, or maybe I was not doing the right thing. But I had never had doubt in myself. Even though the people around me always doubted me, you know, didn't uh, have faith in me, at least in what I was going to do or what I was, you know, wanted to take up as a career and profession. Uh, but luckily, you know, I uh, had this enormous belief uh, in myself and, uh, and, and enormous confidence as well. And that kept me going. So I fell. I was not discouraged. I uh, did not opt for any other profession. I just said that, okay, this is not the right time, but I still have it in me. And if I get up and try it again, uh, I should succeed. And that's what exactly happened. So your words, basically your words and your thoughts sort of came true and it worked out for the best for you. I think so. It's basically my self-confidence at that time, at that, at that point in life. But now when I, you know, at this point in life, I think that, you know, like when you were younger, you can afford to fail. So are you glad that whatever the failure was, it came early on in your life or early on in your career? Yes, because now I, you know, like when I venture into something new, I'm much more scared. Uh, than I was when I was uh, much younger or earlier in my uh, in my career. Uh, you know, when I started film and it didn't work out, I still had that confidence. But now when I want to venture into something new, I am quite scared of the failure because I just think that, you know, as time passes by and as you get older, maybe you don't have that much of time to rectify your mistakes. 
So you wouldn't want to make uh, so many mistakes. But when you're younger, you know, even if you have, uh, uh, you know, committed mis a mistake, uh, you feel that if you have learned from your mistakes, if you have taken a lesson from it, uh, you can still move forward. You can still rectify it, provided you have sort of, you know, taken a lesson from your uh, mistakes and failures. But as you get older, right now, I don't think that I have the same amount of self-confidence to fail at this point in life as I did then. Is it also because of the answerability or the fact that there's just so many people out there I think it is riding just, on that? I think it is just, you know, like you feel that maybe you don't have enough time to rectify it, you know, maybe you don't, uh, uh, because, you know, after a certain period in, in, in time, you just feel that you have a lesser time. And then if you want to venture into new things, uh, either uh, you would want to do it when you are, I wouldn't say 100% sure, but pretty much sure, you know, like right. there's no such thing as 100% sure. Uh, but uh, in the back of your head, you would say, oh, if I fail, um, I may not be able to sort of like, you know, uh, take it in as easily as I did, say, about 30 years ago in the beginning of my career. So I'm more cautious now. It's the same person with a different mindset. Absolutely. I don't know if it's my fault or my age's fault. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think it might be a bit of strength. I think it might be a bit of maturity and a bit of growing up to actually change like yeah. that. Because when you are younger, you're more willing to take chances and more willing oh, to yeah. take risks. And were you like that? Would you think well, you were yes, like that? Yes, when I look back at myself, you know, like 30 years ago or in my late 20s or mid 20s, I actually like to thank that person right now because of having so much of self-confidence, having so much of faith uh, in himself. Uh, in spite of the fact that uh, nobody was having so much of uh, trust or faith uh, in him. You know, usually when you're a younger person and you're venturing into a profession, support system matters a lot. It really helps you. You know, when people around you tell you that, yes, you can do it, or we believe you can do it, you know, um, or if you fail, even if you fail, you come back to your support system and they say, oh, you have failed, but you still have it in you and you can make it. I had none of those. Uh, None of that existed, so it was kind of a one, uh, one man army kind of thing, you know, like uh, I had to be my own counselor. Um, <laughs> I had to have a built in mechanism of my own to boost my faith in me and belief in me. And I'm so glad that me as a 25 year old or 24 year old uh, had all that. So. I thank myself, uh, my, my, myself as 24 or 25 years old. <laughs> right. Sir, tell me one thing. If you had not failed, how would your life be different from what it is now? That's a good question, you know. Because now when I look back, I think uh, uh, my failure was my strength, you know. I had the confidence that I can do it but then I was never overconfident. So there was that, the, you know, certain amount of humbleness, even if you succeed, because after the failure, when I did my first film, after the failure, I failed in my first film, then I went away for a couple of years, then I came back, and then I did a film again, and that was received with a bang. Right. It sort of created a mini, kind of a mini revolution in the Nepali film industry. So, because I failed earlier, there was this certain amount of humbleness in me to accept the success that I received then. So it just went to, into my head. And subsequently, even after that, as I kept on climbing the ladder of success, success never went into my head. So maybe it is because of the failure in the first step that certain amount of humbleness, you know, certain amount of, um, uh, you know, like uh, not being overconfident just because I'm churning out one successful film after the other and the people are receiving me with their open hearts, you know. Uh, so I'm glad, yeah, I think I, I got some strength from that. So what I understand is that your first failure basically kept you grounded, prevented you from becoming overconfident 
and that may be in some way or the other pushed you to work harder and then to achieve success over and over and over again? I think so. I think uh, now when I look back, uh, it's, it's probably that because, you know, people, uh, because, you know, right after my first film, I, I achieved, uh, like I said, you know, like it was sort of like a mini revolution in Nepali film and the kind of adulation and praise and fan following that I, wa that I was getting was almost unheard of. But like you said, it kept me grounded. Uh, I think in the back of my head, what kept me grounded was that just because I have succeeded thus far, it doesn't mean that I'll succeed further on. Uh, there might be a failure again. So I'll ho always have to, you know, tread my path cautiously because this success might any day, any time turn into failure again. And uh, I'll have to face the challenges all over again. So. I think that is what kept me grounded because I tasted uh, the taste of failure right from the first step. Uh, had I succeeded on my first film, maybe, and the kind of success that I got in Nepali films right from day one, maybe, I don't know, maybe I would have either been overconfident or taken my success for granted or, or you know, uh, why not, I can do it kind of, you know, attitude. Uh, so all this while, you know, in the last, I've been in the Nepali films for the last 30, 32 years. Success never went into my head. Thank God I always had a certain amount of humbleness. And, uh, and always in the back of my head was that uh, I can fail any time again. And uh, I have to be prepared for that challenge. So very interestingly, you also spoke about the fact that after your first failure, you took a two-year sort of a sabbatical or you went right. away and you came right. back. In those two years, you said that you were your own counsellor. Yeah. And for me, this word is extremely weighted, you know. Yeah. What were you doing on a day-to-day -day or a week-to-week -week basis to counsel yourself out of that state? Because for a young 25-year-old guy, to fail at something that has so much banking on it can be extremely, extremely burdening. Oh, yeah. But how did you manage to counsel yourself, like you said you did, out of that, knowing fully well that Kaseko supports Haina. I'm, I'm doing this alone. I'm swimming all alone in this sea <laughs> and I'm going to be counselling myself I'm, out of I'm this. I'm so thankful to my 25-year-old guy. You know, like, I'm so thankful for <laughs> you him. You love that guy, it, don't it, you? I, I, I do it. because uh -huh. It's because of his a attitude or, you know, uh, whatever mindset that he decided to opt that I have been able to uh, do this journey thus far. Um, well, before I say this, I, I got to tell you a little bit about Nepali films because, you know, like when I started off in, in Nepali films, we were hardly making any films, you know, there was absolutely, you know, there was no career to speak of in Nepali films. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why my parents were constantly discouraging me. And my father was a diplomat. So when I was, when I did my first film that I failed, my father was stationed in New Delhi at Nepal Embassy and my home, all of my family were there. So when I failed in my first film here, and my parents absolutely did not like me to, to, to work in, in film in this country, not because they didn't like films or arts, they just didn't see any future for, a, uh, for, for, their, for their son, you know, like, I mean, we have uh, brought, him, brought him up well, we've given him, you know. A great education as well, absolutely put him into a nice schools and new colleges. And this guy says he wants to go into the movie. There's nothing wrong with the movies, but you know, the movie scenario was not happening in this country, you know? So basically my parents were thinking that, what are you going to do by being in a Nepali film? You know, we're hardly making any films. At that point in time, we were probably making about maybe one film in two years or two films in three years, you know? And uh, th yeah, the Nepali film scenario was uh, just almost non-existent. And that's one of the reasons why they, they discouraged me. So I went against the tide, against the wishes of my parents, and I came here, I failed. So I went back. I went to my, my family who were living in Delhi at that time. Uh, with, uh, I didn't go back as a failure for my own, own self, but when I get, got back to my family, when I met my parents, they said, okay, see, this is, we told you all the while that there's nothing in Nepali films, you know? you will not be able to make it. See, we told you, and we were right. You went, you tried, you failed, 
Now you've come back empty-handed. Uh, but, so there was total discouragement from, from all sides, and, and I, I had failed as well. So there was no option but uh, to keep the faith in myself uh, by my own you know, inbuilt mechanism, uh, trust myself, and be my own counselor. Did you talk to yourself? Did you sort of go like, go Rajesh, go Rajesh? I don't know what kind of mechanism you know, was, was at work at that time, but it could be my personality, it could be my nature of that period, that I was not discouraged. Were you stubborn? I, I just would say that I believed in myself. And that is probably because nobody believed in myself. Maybe I didn't have any choice, you know. Right. If other people believed in me, maybe I would be constantly dependent on other people's, you know, encouragement and other people believing in me. But from day one, nobody, uh, nobody trusted my choice of, of, of the thing that I was about to venture into, to do. Uh, I'm not calling it a profession because at that point in time, you couldn't really see, say uh, working in Nepali film could be a profession. Uh, but yet I wanted to do it. Um, so, yeah, so there was, I, I was surrounded by discouragement. I was surrounded by people who were trying to talk me against it. And uh, I wouldn't say st stubborn, but I was like, well, I, I'll use another word. I was adamant on what I wanted to do. That was, I, I, I was pretty sure. You know, I said, I think, I was adamant and then I had a, a, another thing in my mind was I was um, wise enough to have that strategy in my mind was that I'm young, you know, I can afford some time, you know, let me give myself a second chance. I can afford a few years of, 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 of my life in, 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 the, in the profession that I have extreme passion for, you know. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't give up after the first failure, because I thought that if I didn't give myself a second chance uh, of something that I have this enormous passion for and number one choice of, 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 of career that I want to have, then at some point in my life I might regret that why didn't I do it, you know? Why, didn't, well, why wasn't I strong enough? Why I wasn't determined uh, to do what I wanted to do in spite of the surroundings that I was living in? Uh, so I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad for that guy. <laughs> We're glad as well, right? For the 25-year-old you who decided to push on and decided to be adamant. Because the industry is better because of it. The country is better because of it. The industry yeah. is better because I see so many young people these days, they're very extremely passionate about it and they know there is a path, they know there is a profession, they know there's a I career, know. a respected career that exists I out know. there. At and this point. in a way you were a trailblazer and you created that. And I'm so glad that you know we've, uh, we've come to this point uh, in Nepali films because when I started off, like I told you, uh, there was no career to speak of. And when my first film was released, Mini Revolution was created and we just went along creating our own path, you know. And the biggest achievement, if you ask me, uh, of mine in, in Nepali film career is more than the adulation and accolades and you know, fan following and number of films that I've done. More than that, uh, what I take my success as is, as my career went uh, uh, further, the whole Nepali scenario also developed parallelly. So we were sort of like uh, partner together, partners in, in the journey, right. you know, like. So I was growing, the Nepali film scenario was growing, you know. So we, were, we, we grew up together. And uh, so when I look back, my greatest achievement would be that more than anything else is that uh, I was able to participate in that growth. You know, because when I did my first film, to be very honest, I didn't even know where my second film was going to come from because we were making so less films. But once the first film was released, there were a lot of people came in, and a lot of investors came in, and they said, okay, we want to make a film with this guy. So I started off my career by, uh, by, a, by this you know, huge uh, question mark of where my second film is going to come from. But by the time my first film was released, and a year later, I was working in three or four films sim simultaneously.
which must have been great and unheard of at that point. Yes, and by the third year, I was putting in 16 to 18 hours in the films. So that rapidly things went on, you know, expanding. And as the scenario expanded, we needed to put in, and, 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 and the crew members and the rest of the people also came in, you know, and they started expanding as well. Because when I came in, we probably had maybe about a handful of cameramen or two or three makeup men and all that. So as we went on making more and more films, we needed more technicians, we needed more people who were working behind the cameras. So... Um, the industry was sort of created from ground up. Then. Right, so the, the industry expanded, you know, and uh, a lot of people uh, started coming in, so there was more job opportunities and things like that. So uh, that is... Uh, that, that is what I truly consider as an achievement of mine more than anything else. And what was your parents' reaction after the film did extremely <laughs> well? Was that also something that made you, at that point, proud? You know, I have... An a, achievement, maybe? Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's one of my tragedies. My tragedy is that, you know, like, uh, when my first film released, my father didn't take it very seriously. Uh, he just thought that this is just like a, you know, a lady luck kind of thing. It just <laughs> happened. And yeah, even after all the struggle. Well, after my first film was yeah. uh, was released, yeah, he uh, he didn't even. None of my family members saw my first film, the pre premiere. Okay. I went there alone. Okay. Yeah, that's how it happens. <laughs> so there's a bit of tragedy. In there. I'm and then, about it now. and then after that, what happened was after my first film was released, and I was working in my second or third films. My father was uh, posted to Pakistan uh, as a Nepali ambassador to Pakistan. And uh, after being about a, a month there, he had a very dramatic death. Uh, so he passed away. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, things, you know, that uh, were left uh, uh, unspoken, unexplained. And uh, because you see, he and I had a, well, we had enormous love for each other. There was no doubt. And he still is the guy that I respect the most. But somehow my choice of profession, he didn't like. And we almost went to a point where he was almost non-communicating with me. We were this. So when he went to Pakistan, he, um, he didn't even say goodbye to me and he went to Pakistan. And then I always thought that, oh, it doesn't matter because we have this respect and love for each other. And he will see that as I progress, because ultimately what he wants, I mean, he's not against film or arts. What he wants is he wants me to, he Be wants successful. his son to have a reasonable career and a successful life in some way or the other, you know. And once he sees that, everything will fall into place. That's what I thought. But then he went and uh, at a very, I mean, uh, he wasn't that old, he was only 56 years old and uh, he had this dramatic death uh, actually when he was in the car. Somebody was driving for him, he was in the backseat of a car and he had some breathing problem and then he passed away after being a month in Pakistan. So um, everything was left unexplained. <laughs> but you know what, I think uh, he's, yeah, but uh, after his death what I take uh, consolation is that um, I think he is the motivating factor even now even though uh, he disagreed with my uh, uh, choice of profession and all that. I still consider him as a motivating factor, so I have huge respect for him. And maybe because, what I'm understanding from this is, because so much was left unspoken, unsaid, maybe there's this will and this urge in you to sort of go out there and, in a way, in a strange way, to make sure he knows, because you know, Probably, because I, I must have carried that in my subconscious, the, that, that, uh, that tragedy. Right. And maybe that tragedy made me a better actor. I, you never know. <laughs> and also maybe that, helps in, maybe that helps also because the depth of character as a person yeah. also helps in order to emote better on screen. Right. And that translates as well. And I guess, I yeah, guess I in some way you can sort of relate to that or it would make sense there and fit into place maybe, so to say. So more or less, you know, like my strength comes from failure and trage tragedy. <laughs> and that's why you can break through walls and kill thousand yeah. people at a time. I mean, yeah. th these yeah. are your superpowers, right? Great. 
But I feel so good, you know, like uh, uh, succeeding in Nepali films because, you know, like in the beginning when I started off, the immediate families were not supporting me, they were not this, but once my film was released, the whole of the country was suddenly, you know, sort of like uh, accepting me with your open heart. And they were saying, oh, you should go on, you should be doing and you know, keep on doing Nepali films, don't go elsewhere, you know, that kind of thing. So after my first film was released, the people were the ones who actually became my motivating factor and inspiration factor. So uh, I give a, a lot of credit to them, a lot of credit, yeah. So who was the first person that you can remember maybe all those years ago who actually probably went up and told you maybe for the first time what you wanted to hear maybe from your parents or your closest group of people that you know what, you're really good. This is, this is what you should be doing. Who was the first person who did that to you? Or was it a professional contact or just, just somebody from the public, maybe? I don't know if I should open up that chapter, but... <laughs> it's okay if you don't want to, but... It's yeah. actually, a, you know, I had a, a, a friend and a girl, and she was, uh, she was actually traveling in this country. She was from abroad. And when I was doing my first film, uh, we were good friends, very good friends. We are spending a lot of times together. So when she saw that I absolutely had no support systems and nobody was encouraging me, but she genuinely believed in me and, she, and she's the one who told me that, uh, I think you can do it. I think uh, you have it in you. What did those words mean to you at that point? Her encouragement? Oh, that was... That was an enormous boost uh, because, like I said, I was a one-man army. I was being my own counselor, I was being this, and then suddenly there's someone else who knows me well, who has uh, spent some time with me, and, uh, and then she tells me that, uh, no, I, no I, I really believe you can do it. It's, uh, you shouldn't be uh, listening to other people. And um, at one point, she even met uh, my father, and my father actually even said that, you know, why is he doing something that he is not capable of doing? He has failed in this. And I remember she said, was, her very word was, uh, no, Mr. Amal, your, your son is an extraordinary person, and uh, I believe he can do it. Uh, it's just that you're not uh, having enough trust in him. Uh, those were the exact words. And that was the only person that I had who was sort of like, uh, you know, uh, who was encouraging me, who, besides myself. Besides you, besides <laughs> you being your biggest counselor, cheerleader, and support system, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And at that point, it meant a lot to you, the world, to hear somebody else verbalize their appreciation for you and their support. It did, yeah. I, 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 I appreciate that. But um, again, I mean, uh, I'm also thankful that I had that courage within me as well because, uh, well, yeah, she, she, she was a great booster, but even if, if she wasn't in my life, I would like to believe that uh, even with a lot of hardship and challenges, I would have probably made it through the storm. Done it anyway. Right? <laughs> but I give, I give enormous give credit, credit for her. Right, enormous absolutely. credit to her. Absolutely. Yeah. So your father was a diplomat. He was in a very, he was in a very thorough profession, something that you can bank on. Uh, you know, a sound career, something oh, that's yeah. not oh, as, yeah. as uncertain as a freelancer, because at that point, that's exactly what you were. You were a freelancer, you were a professional doing your thing. Did you ever feel that I wish there was more certainty or I wish freelancing wasn't so difficult or were there any challenges with that? Yeah, my parents, I mean, my father was a career diplomat, so my parents already had uh, decided that, you know, what kind of professions the children would follow right from our school days. What the was the profession that uh, the you were supposed fact, to... The matter, of fact, matter of fact, you know, we're five in, in the family, we're five siblings. Uh, I have an elder twin sisters above me. And my parents had started calling, thank God they didn't call me by any uh, profession when I was a kid, but this, they had started calling my twin sister as doctors right from, I think, first grade or second grade. 
Did you ever have a plan B? Actually, I did. That's why, that's one of the reasons why I said that, you know, I was young, let me give some time for my passion. And the reason why I said let me give some time is that I sort of had a plan B, you know. What and was your plan B, if I may ask? <laughs> Astronaut? No, at that point, you know, like, you know, I had a certain amount of education. I was uh, sort of like brought up around the world with my parents, you know. By the time I finished my school, I must have gone to schools in maybe four or five different countries. So I thought that maybe I would go and live abroad somewhere at that point in life. Thank God I didn't do it because uh, subsequently later in life, I uh, just couldn't imagine uh, how I thought that I would want to leave this country and go and uh, live abroad. But at that time, I actually did because I had more international experience than I had the experience of my own country. Uh, and another thing that I'm very thankful uh, with Nepali film is that Nepali film um, connected me with my own country and my own people. It got me so much more closer, you know, things that I missed growing up. Because as a, as a diplomat's uh, child, I was sort of, you know, my formative years were spent in different countries. And I um, didn't know too much about uh, the people in the country as much as I would want to. But I, uh, after being in the film, I couldn't be more Nepali than, than any Nepali because... <laughs> Absolutely, because I'm sure your exposure to the country is completely different. You've oh, yeah. traveled, met yeah. so many people. I've met people of different walks of Absolutely. life and they all accepted me with open arms. And now it's not even... I mean, I don't know how it works with uh, f uh, fans and actors in other countries, but in this country, my own personal experience is that they treat you as, uh, at least they treat me as a member of their own family. You know, right. it's like, it's not even um, the actor and uh, fan adulation. It's more like, he's one of us, you know, like. It's very dai. Like, oh, yeah. I know so many people who've never met you. I mean, fans who call you dai. Yeah. You know, they feel that sort of belongingness oh, yeah. and that, that sort of connection. Maybe because of the films, or maybe because oh, yes. that's how it is here. No, it's, it's, it's more to do with the films as well, because the kind of character I portrayed was always underdog, always uh, the, one of the people right. you know, representing them. And so the ordinary people, especially the youth, you know, saw, they saw their own voice in my uh, character, you know, uh, and they saw that I was one of them, but a little bit larger than life. Uh, doing the things that they would uh, want to, you know, imagine that they could be able to do it. And they more or less identified with my characters. And most of the characters that I did was really underdog, general, you know, normal Nepali people, one of, one of the people. And I, and thank God I was able to do those characters because um, uh, right after my second film, when I came to know that the way the Nepali people accepted the film, I thought that, okay, now what I should do is uh, I should be catering to, these, to the people, catering to their taste, catering to their mindset, catering to their situation in life, and I should be representing them in the films. In fact, when you were talking uh, about the fact that you decided not to go abroad, yeah. not only should you feel thankful for your decision, the country should as well. Because not only has your presence managed to create the film industry and to give it the shape and the structure that we have today, there's so many people that are living off of it. And there's just so much happening around it that's giving employment. And I can see this entire younger generation that wants to actively be a part of it. And because of the efforts of people like you who have gone there, put in that work, is that it's possible for people like that to do that. And it's amazing what you've achieved. I know, I also consider myself extremely lucky because you see, uh, actor's profession as it is anywhere in the world is a very insecure profession. It's not something that you can get in and then say that, okay, now I've got in, I'm, I'm successful and I can carry on for another 30 or 40 years of my life. It's, it's not that. Your, your career can stop any time, any moment. Do you still feel that? Uh, yes, because at this point in life now, I, uh, I cannot... Um, you know, stand on the success that I've achieved previously. That is, that is in the archives now. You know, now. now I've got to like uh, turn a new leaf and 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 say that I'm, uh, now I have to start with a new avatar, maybe you know, because with the age and the time and 
kind of films we're making. So it's always like that in, in, in films as an actor. You've got to reinvent yourself, innovate yourself if you want to sustain. And also the most important thing is because film is such a democratic field that, you know, you can only last as long as your, as your audience want you to, as long as they want. And I'm so successful that they sort of tolerated me all these years, film after film, because by any uh, estimation or calculation of, a, uh, of an actor, I had uh, reached a saturation point with my audience long, long ago, because I was churning out maybe 10 to 12 films in a year. So so when they're seeing me like in 10 to 12 films every year in and year out, they should have said, oh, we're just, we had enough of him, you know. But luckily that went on for a good 12, 13, 15 years. And uh, matter of fact, the first 12 years uh, of, my, of my career, I was putting in 16 to 18 hours and every day without any holidays or break, no weekends because I was assigned to so many films that I had to, you know, finish all my assignments and my, on my contract, uh, that even on festivals or the other holidays, you know, the national holidays that we get is, we only take the minimum amount of time day off. Like in Dasai, we would only take, maybe I would only take about a day off, or in Tihar, I would only take uh, two days off, just on the main days and start working again. And that went on for 12 years. 12 years. After that, I sort of started slowing down a bit. So putting in 16 to 18 hours uh, of work every day, nonstop, with no day off. Uh, but this is what's strange to me. You just said you've been really lucky, yet what I can see from you is two things. Pure talent, crazy determination, and a whole lot of hard work to back all of that. And for me, you use the word tolerated. The also audience sincerity, loved you, know? you for 12 years. Sincerity then. towards your work and, Absolutely. Uh, and the fan. The sincerity, know? the dedication. Yeah. Uh, I would personally say possibly it is 5% luck. Mm. But for me, when I hear your story as an outsider, as a third person, I think there's just so much more at play here. You have the talent, of course, but you've backed it up with so much of dedication and so much of hard work that honestly, it seemed like a match made in heaven. It was supposed to happen. It should have happened. And I would be surprised if the audience didn't love you in the way they did. Mm. So for me, your journey is something that a lot of people can not only learn from, but can be inspired by. Because to taste failure at the very beginning could be discouraging to so many people. Right. You know, you have these students in class 10, 11, right? Oh, maths, my marks, Ramro, I made it the life suck you. Right, I hear I know. this all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you look back and you realize just how inconsequential yeah. that one little failure right. could be. Right. But it could have made such an impact on yeah. you, the way it taught you. And for me to hear your story has been quite an eye-opener and it's been quite... Now, what I think the young people can take away from, from my journey or from my career is that if you learn lessons from your mistakes, you know, they're not mistakes, they're just lessons. Right. and you can move on, you know. Especially in earlier in life, no matter what kind of professions you're doing or what kind of journey you have opted for. If you uh, have failed in the beginning or if you have committed a mistake and provided you take lessons from your mistake and turn that into a strength, you'll be a better person. And another thing is probably that uh, if you want to do something that you're absolutely very passionate about, but something that has been has not been proven in the society or doesn't have any precedent in the society, and that, but you are very passionate and you want to sort of like make it work it out for yourself, then you should venture into it. You know, if there is no examples in front of you, don't search for one. Maybe you'll be an example yourself in the future. You never know. So those are the two things. You know, like never be discouraged by your failures uh, or your mistakes. But if you learn from them, it will make you a better person. And if you have a passion for something that has not been proven in the society or doesn't have any precedent or examples, don't shy away uh, from venturing it. You never know. You will, you can, you know, you can be an example yourself. Like they say, you know, like if, if you take a road that is well treaded, you more or less know where you're going to reach, you know. Even if you succeed, you know, because so many people have traded that and have reached the pinnacle and you know 
where the pinnacle is. But if you tread a path which is untreaded, where people haven't walked, two things can happen. Either you get lost, or you reach a place where nobody else has reached before. You, you uh, find your own pinnacle, you know. So uh, basically, yeah, so failure can be a strength. And uh, path untreaded can be turned into a beautiful highway. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dai. Your entire, this entire conversation has for me been something that I'm going to think back and reflect on every time I'm stuck somewhere. Right. Thank you so much for not only showing the light, but for being the light. Thank you. Thank pleasure. You. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much.